Hey, everybody. All right, here we go. This is Everything Phoenix. And uh, thank you guys out there who are who've been watching um, our uh, YouTube channel for quite some time. And we are now adding the live broadcast to this. So hopefully internet will be good. Hopefully everything will be great. We're going to jump right into this. And we have some technology problems. Then we'll get them fixed and ready to go for next time. But the, the live here video is going to be about um, new developments in Phoenix. So feel free to chat uh, with me here. Uh, we'll spend 30 minutes or so, maybe longer, just depends, on some new developments in Phoenix, as well as where is the housing market going? That's that's not a hot topic, is it? Where's the housing market in Phoenix specifically going in the future? And what's it look like right now? How can we make the best decision to buy, rent, sell, whatever it is in the future, right? So that's what it's all about. So we're going to talk about some of that stuff here. What I want to do is start with some of the developments. I think it's important that people kind of know what's some things that are happening around the Phoenix area, right? And so we're going. To, I'm going to share my screen here, and we're going to go over a couple of these, a couple of these things here. So I'm going to jump around a little bit here. We're going to talk about jobs. We're going to talk about, um, you know, uh, we're going to talk about uh, development. We're going to talk about different things that different uh, um, suburbs or whatnot are are doing right now in the Phoenix area, right? So let's talk about water, right? Water is a hot topic. Outside of the housing market, water might be the next thing that people are hearing so much misinformation about, or maybe it's correct information. But either way, some people are a little uh, little scared about maybe what's it look like for the future long-term sustainability for water in Phoenix. We are in the Sonoran Desert, actually, right? So water, that's a, that's a legit topic. So let's talk about that real quick, guys. Here we go. We have Tempe, all right? Tempe is a suburb of Phoenix, for those, those of you who don't know. And uh, Tempe is going to reopen a long dormant water reclamation plant amid the current drought. Now, this article goes on to sit, talk about this uh, water reclamation plant that's in Tempe um, that was actually shut down in 2010 after the Great Recession. And so you're probably wondering, well, how does it, how does the city of Tempe actually claim or get their water, you know, actually recycled and, and cleaned and so on and so forth? And they do that because they've been sending, it said 19 million uh, gallons right here a day to the 91st Avenue wastewater treatment plant in Phoenix. So Phoenix has been hooking them up for lack of better words and helping them out, I'm sure for a nice fee um, that the city of uh, Tempe residents pay, but that's going to uh, decline over time, right? So they're gonna open this plant up. It's gonna cost uh, a bunch of money as you could probably imagine um, to the tune of uh, $60 million of the city's budget. And they're going to start treating their water in-house, not all of it. I think they said about 4 million right here, 4 million gallons of wastewater daily will be able to be treated through the Kyrene Tempe plant. So they're still going to send the rest of it over to Phoenix. But the point is what this does is this allows more, um, this allows more uh, water to be recycled and reclaimed um, that is so needed in the, the desert, especially when you're in a drought. Um, they said the worst thing, right? The worst drought we've had currently since the year 2000. So that being said, um, that's kind of interesting, right? And there's a lot of water uh, talk going on throughout the valley right now. So something that people need to be aware of and and obviously pay, pay attention to for further development. Good news is there's still a lot of water out there. There truly is, guys. I'm not sure if you guys knew, but but Phoenix actually uses a uh, an aquifer uh, type system. Okay, so what happens actually with Phoenix is they have uh, these aquifers that sit below the actual town of or city of Phoenix. So does Tucson. And what happens is, is, is Phoenix outside of, they said, of, of Tel Aviv in Israel, Phoenix is a number two city ranked in the world right now for water reclamation and to be, be able to be able to reuse water. The technology is good. The investment in the money for technology is there. And because we're in a desert and we're, we're forced to reuse a lot of water. Also, semiconductor plants, chip plants. You know, Phoenix is kind of known as the uh, Silicon Valley of, um, of the desert, if you will, right? And so there's a lot of chips being made, manufacturing plants. Intel has another $4 billion they just put into their corporate headquarters for a plant down in Chandler. And so the amount of water, guys, that those plants use, absolutely incredible. It'll blow your mind. The amount of water they use to make um, chips that go in pretty much every electronic device for the most part, right? So that being said, um, Phoenix is forced to be able to reclaim and reuse their water because we just don't have, it's not plentiful or in the desert. But how do we do that? It's an aquifer system. So when water, we use 40% of our water from the Colorado River. That's it. A lot of people think it's about 80%, 90%. It's not. Now, the Colorado River, obviously, like pretty much everything else here in the West, is actually 
decreasing, unfortunately. So it'd be great if we just had rain for days and days and weeks and weeks, but we only get 40% of it. And currently we don't use all of our allotment for the water we get throughout those the other sources like the Verde River, et cetera. So what we do actually, if we don't use all the water that we're allotted to take, if you will, we actually send it to the aquifer system and we actually store some of it under there as well as in Tucson um, as well. So um, it's pretty interesting how that works, guys, um, that there's all this water, this huge water table below our feet when we're walking around Phoenix. It's kind of interesting, right? Um, but they they tap into it through obviously, you know, wells and, and then we have a canal system that runs uh, our water throughout the valley and so on and so forth. So pretty interesting how that works. And we've been forced to reclaim and reuse water. In fact, the uh, the director of the water water department resources um, or water resources department, I should say in Phoenix, she was actually quoted by saying that we right now have over, I think it's 600 million acre feet of water stored or in the squat aquifers and or ready for use, which, which translate million acre feet. Like what's that, right? That translates into about 300 years of future water use actually in the Phoenix area at our current consumption level. So that's encouraging. Now, obviously as more people are moving here, which it's going to continue to happen because of all the other benefits that Phoenix has going for it. But as more people come here, it's going to put a bigger strain on that water supply, right? So hopefully technology will continue to develop so that it will come up to meet um, the additional usage that people will require with the water in Phoenix. And maybe they'll kind of negate and offset each other. Hopefully that's the plan as we move forward so that that 300 you know, years of water supply, future water supply stays at that level. But we'll see. There's all kinds of other, uh, you know, natural disasters or developments that could happen that will they'll play a role in that. So we'll see that. But this water plant opening, I think that's money well invested, guys, because we could use as much of that as possible to be able to reclaim and reuse water so that we're not continually drawing from new water supplies that city has access to. All right. So that is the water issue, which I wanted to hit. Let's go over here and talk about Phoenix Sky Harbor. Obviously, Phoenix Sky Harbor is a uh, international airport. And Phoenix is the fifth largest city in the entire country. So having an airport that actually is, uh, is you know, uh, viable and is large and can move people around is important. So um, the federal government has now um, agreed to give uh, Phoenix Sky Harbor $194 million to develop a new taxiway. That's pretty cool, right? So currently there's a, it's a three taxiway airport and now it's going to go to four to move people in and out of the airport as quick as possible. So uh, currently the whole project is going to cost $260 million right here. Um, so the additional money will come from uh, the, the rest of the costs uh, will come from, you know, facility charges and they're going to raise the money themselves. The airport is Sky Harbor. And uh, the, but the majority of obviously is coming from taxpayers and federal money. So that is set to, um, I think, be done or be uh, finished in 20, or, uh, 2024 with construction starting in 2023. So, you know, that's something probably we won't see because, guys, you know, we get in the airport, we go through our little terminal and we sit in the plane and we don't really see much of that stuff. Pilots obviously notice it, but then we take off and we're off to the next location or destination. Um, but apparently this is going to help and it's going to help spur development um, for more people to come here and hopefully more international flights to other cities across the world. That's the idea. So um, it's interesting. I'm from Nebraska, guys. Omaha, Nebraska. Big shout out to Omaha. Um, Kiwit is a big, huge company, uh, a construction development company in Omaha, and they got the bid, I guess, to handle the, uh, the work at the airport. So I'm a little biased. I just share it because I'm from Nebraska. All right, guys. So that's, that's interesting. Um, and then we have, uh, some other things going on here. So right now Phoenix has some infill projects. We talked about development on this, on this, uh, advertisement for this live YouTube video. So what's up with the development around Phoenix? Well, this article is interesting. It's not, you know, uh, anything crazy, but it's just talking about different and multiple sites they have across the city that are good sized parcels that Phoenix is actually going to develop if they are not developed by private, you know, companies. And so there's 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 certain things that are infill lots here, you know, uh, the lot first street, you know, some things that are kind of, you know, big lots, but you know, at the, at the end of the day, small potatoes in the grand scheme of things for people to know about. But the east side of downtown Phoenix and some so on and so, so on and so forth are going to be developed through. Um, you know, the city itself or private contractors. So that was interesting because they're all always looking to develop several infill parcels to make it better for, you know, certain areas that maybe haven't been that great for a long time. 24th and Broadway, First Street, East Side of Downtown, places like that. Okay. Um, and I'm just getting started here, guys. We got some cool stuff going on here in Phoenix. We talked about semiconductors. Here we go. 
there's a supplier that's doubling down in East Valley with a new manufacturing plant. So for those of you who've been living under a rock, right? You have Intel, corporate headquarters, Chandler, Arizona. You got Microchip Technology, corporate headquarters, Chandler, Arizona. You have several others as well. Chandler is amazing when it comes to chip technology. Um, but you also have TSMC, Taiwan Manufacturer Semiconductor Plant. Okay, that's going up in North Phoenix, actually. Now, it's the only plant outside of Taiwan that's obviously going up in the United States of America. And guys, this thing is huge. We're talking a minimum of like 16 to 20 cranes out there building this huge plant that's going to bring thousands of high paying tech jobs right to that North Phoenix area. So with all that going on, you have a company here out of uh, Japan, the JX Nippon Mining and Metals Company that actually is a supplier to for, for building manufacturing uh, chips or, or chips, I should say, technology chips, uh, microchips. And they're uh, putting a big plant out here that's going to be, uh, uh, the land's already bought. They're going to start building that here, I think, the end of 2023. It's expected to be completed by early 2024. And that's going to be phase one. So they're going to keep doing other stuff too as well to continue to bolster and supply Intel, TSMC, which are the two largest microchip manufacturing uh, companies in the entire world. And they're both located right here in Phoenix. So pretty darn cool. Of course, they're getting tax incentives and so on and so forth because the federal government knows that guys, microchips run everything. So, um, you know, that being said, we need to make sure we have those available for us Americans as well as other people around the world. All right, some other stuff here. Let's see if I can get this to pull up. Um, let's go Bank 34. I want to talk about this. So Bank 34 aims to become the premier community bank after moving headquarters to Scottsdale. This is a bank that's based out of New Mexico previously. And I know this building that's right here in North Scottsdale uh, by the TPC Golf Course. For those of you who like golf. And um, they are uh, aiming to become a big player in the Arizona market. They see the um, population growth. They see the long-term um, you know, perspective for the influx of population that is occurring actually in Phoenix, Arizona. So they, uh, from a banking standpoint to microchip technology, you know, to healthcare, Phoenix is exploding. So here's the CEO talking about why they left New Mexico to come to Phoenix. And they are, they have a goal to become the LVA 1 billion in assets right here under management uh, or deposits. And therefore they have the ability to become the largest community bank in the state. Um, so, um, they just talked about what, what all the good things are for Arizona and Arizona market. And that's why they brought their, um, 70 employees and their headquarters to Scottsdale, Arizona. All right. So what else? Some news here. Um, this is interesting here. Okay. Fashion square mall in Scottsdale. All right, ladies or men, um, this is going to be good news because guess what? The Scottsdale fashion square, which is one of you know, the nation's premier malls is actually getting another renovation. Okay. They are trying to blow this thing up as if it's not already blown up. So there's a little picture of the fashion square and they are going to start renovating this. Now, uh, what's interesting is they just did a large renovation on this in 2018 and they, and it worked. They got, um, an ink it's anchored by Nima Marcus, right? Which is high end luxury department store, but you have now, um, on, on that on that west side of the Fashion Square, you now have Ocean Forty Four, you have Toka Madera, you have which is really hot Nobu, right? Some of these restaurants that are you know premier restaurants, right, across the entire country, and uh, you know they they had the Harkins uh, Theater that got relocated there, or renovated, I should say, um, and so they're trying to do another big renovation um, for this uh, this mall. Currently, this is pretty. what I thought was pretty cool. The Valley's retail sector saw its vacancy rate drop to 6.6%. That's it. So who said retail was done? Now, retail might be done in a small town in the middle of nowhere, America, but retail in Scottsdale, Arizona is doing just fine. In fact, I thought one of the cool things about this article was they just, uh, they just basically lured, um, what is it? Hermes. I don't know how to say it right. Hermes, is it Hermes? I obviously don't shop there. I don't own anything that's Hermes, uh, but uh, Hermes is International is coming to Fashion Square sometime in 2024. Part of this new renovation is part of getting an alluring high-end shops to come to Scottsdale, right? As if we didn't have enough. With the last renovation, look, they attracted tenants such as Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Prada, Jimmy Choo, and other um, you know high-end rest high-end restaurants and high-end department stores, high-end retailers. So. 
Retailing is not done, guys. People like to go in, like to touch, like to feel what's going on uh, with the product they want to buy, especially when you're paying a lot of money for it. So if you want high-end retail, Scott still has it, and it's only going to get better. That's not to mention, that's not to mention the Ritz Carlton project that's going on in the um, in the Paradise Valley, Scott's Central Scottsdale border. That, that's going to be amazing with the um, the Fendi building and so on and so forth. So a lot of cool stuff coming here, guys, to the Scottsdale area. And rightly so. The population growth is growing and um, it's getting pretty crazy. All right. So let's go move over here. I want to talk about jobs. We talked about, you know, uh, microchips. We talked about banking. Here we have the healthcare se sector here. Some of, you guys, some of you guys don't know, Mayo Clinic, pretty much everyone's heard of Mayo Clinic, right? Well, did you know that Scottsdale is one of three cities, Phoenix, Scottsdale, one of three cities across the country that actually have Mayo Clinics or hospitals? It's based out of Rochester, Minnesota, but they operate in Scottsdale, Phoenix and Jacksonville, Florida. And they are going to boost pay by 6%, its biggest raise in decades. That's notable. And this matters for everything, guys, because think about it. Someone gets a 6% raise, and now they can afford more of a house. Maybe they said even like maintenance is getting a raise, right? Things like that. So maybe they rent. Maybe with this raise now, they'll be able to afford a house. When that happens, obviously more homes are bought, and the economy maybe it helps the economy turn around a little bit, right? It all has this lag domino effect that is pretty cool when any type of company steps up to give raises across the board especially in this economy right now where um, raises are starting to you know, dis uh, dissipate because you have a lot of layoffs, especially in the real estate mortgage industry, right? Um, it's pretty cool that you hear some positive news like this for the healthcare sector. So they, they plan to give a raise of 6%, nearly twice as much as the national average annual pay hike. And so that's really cool. So um, your Mayo Clinic has a big presence here in Scottsdale. They have a Mayo Clinic in the east end of Scottsdale. They also have a Mayo Hospital in North Central Phoenix, which is on the, the Scottsdale border right there. And it's huge and it keeps expanding, guys. So pretty darn cool. Matthew Taylor, what's up, man? Um, we got Matthew Taylor. Let me let me uh jump off here real quick. What uh what Matt what did Matt say? Cracker Jacks just got bought. Have you heard what will be going on there? I heard it may be outdoor shopping nightlife. Matt, you know what? Uh it's a good question. That's kind of in the dark. I have, I've heard rumors. I've read some articles, but no one seemed to step up and say for sure what it's going to be. What I've heard is going to be is multi-use space. So it's going to be kind of what I, what you heard it is, is what I heard it will be. And that will also have some housing as well, where you have some entertainment on the bottom and you have um, condos, you know, and some sort of um, living spaces, condos, townhomes, whatever, some sort of living spaces above that. For those who don't know, Cracker Jacks, guys, is, is located right there in North Central Scottsdale, and it is an old school driving range. And since Top Golf came around, Cracker Jacks, sorry, man, it's time to go, right? Top Golf just crushed you guys. And that's kind of sad because Cracker Jacks was a mama pop, you know, uh, out, outfit. But Top Golf came in, and and, and there you go. So, uh, good question, though, Matt. Um, I will be following that to find out exactly what goes because if there's housing that goes in there with it, that's just going to help that entire Kierlin. Um, Scottsdale quarter area right there, right? So um, pretty cool. Now, if we jump back over to uh, the Mayo Clinic, um, I want to bring this back up here, guys. So uh, the health system is also facing the tightest labor market in years. Um, and with higher inflation, we have what we have going on. So what's interesting is um, the, the, you have this inflation, you have, you have some companies raising, um, giving raises, but most are not. Some are laying off people, uh, employees. But did you know, guys, that the Federal Reserve, this is the, this is the plan. This is the plan. And it's not it's, it's not a political statement. It's, it's what they are doing. They've come out and said it publicly. They want to stop business. They want to stop business um, from continuing to flourish and just kind of like come back down to planet Earth. Because right now, we've all been living out in outer space right now with what's been happening in the last couple of years. And so to do that, um, the primary reason they want to do this is obviously to, to, to fight inflation, but to get people back to work, Right. We know that in, that the unemployment rate has been really low, which has been great, but there's also a lot of people who have left the employment or the employment sector of the world, right? And they're just not working. Um, a lot of that is, are younger people that maybe, um, you know, let's give an example. You know, this is just a generalization, but um, dad and mom bought a, uh, their house equity went way up, right, over the last couple of years. And so instead of having that, you know, $800,000 house, now their house is worth 1.6. They take out an equity line of credit. They put a down payment on a beach house or a vacation home, right? 
um, or some other second home, that sort of thing, right? Now, uh, little Susie and Johnny, they might be living in that house or that second house or the beach house, right? And they're just kind of like, you know, trying to be entrepreneurial, let's say, and they're just kind of maybe selling, I don't know, jeans or yoga pants, right? From, from some online store, Shopify account. And they're making maybe a little bit of money, but I mean, you know, a hundred dollars a month isn't going to cut it at the end of the day. So they're trying to get those, that, that, that workforce, that labor force that has traditionally always been in the, in the labor arena prior to COVID back to work, right? That's what's happening right now. And so, um, so we'll see what, what happens, but it's pretty cool when you have a company like the Mayo Clinic stepping up to try to take care of the employees as best they can. Um, all right, guys, um, that covers a lot of the development and what's going on around Phoenix. Um, let's let's jump over here to let's jump over here to the housing market. Okay, so guys, this just um, this just something that we put together over at Cook and Associates here, right? We put this together um, to you know, if we're gonna call ourselves real estate advisors, we got we have to advise. I was gonna say we got to advise, but what kind of English is that? We have to advise. We should advise, and that's what this YouTube live and these these types of videos and uh, you know posts are about. But we put this together um, every single month for our clients and and agents, of course, alike, um, to stay in tune with what's going on with the housing market. This is September overview. And by the way, if anybody wants a copy of this, just put your uh, information down in the uh, the chat, or whatever, and that, and we'll try to uh, make sure we get that out to you via email, or you can always you know, ping us on social media or info at cookandassociatesaz.com. All right, we'd be happy to send you a copy of this so you have that. And every month we do this. So we'd be happy to keep you on the list and continue to send it out every month to you. All right, so here we go. Um, this this includes a lot of information, guys, from the Cromford Report. All right, the index. The Cromford Report is the leading housing economist in the entire state of Arizona. And they put out data almost in real time on a daily basis about what's going on in the Phoenix housing market specifically. Okay. So that being said, we want to go through what's going on with the housing market right now here in Phoenix. And there's no better place to turn than to, you guessed it, the Crawford Report. So here we go. Before um, we go any further on this, you have to read this and understand it. Okay. Their index is based off of a balanced market being at a score of 100. So if it's below 100, it is a buyer's market. If it's above 100, it is a seller's market. So supply and demand play an inter integral role on this. So if we jump over here real quick, this is the Cromford Report, which we are subscribers to, and we are happy to bring this to you guys um, because obviously this is paid. Um, but you have the Phoenix market. Now, right here, this is the Cromford Report. It's at 97.9 as of, I told you it's real time, October 6th. Here we go. That's today. So 97.9, meaning we're in the yellow, plus or minus a few points over 100. But what this is saying is that we are in pretty balanced market overall, according to the data today. Now, if you look at supply, you're very low on supply. So we don't have, if we were really high in supply and, and the market was being flooded with it, this would be in the red on this side right here, right? But it's not. We have supply coming to the market, but not an overabundance of it which is good because if we did have a bunch of supply with this kind of demand at 67.1, we'd be in trouble. At least right now we'd be in trouble until something changes. So that ultimately equals a 97.9 market index for Crawford for City of Phoenix. Now, what's cool about this, if you wanna know Scottsdale, okay, let's go to Scottsdale right here. Look how it changes, 135.4. So Scottsdale actually is still in a seller's market by data definition. Very little supply, more demand, it's higher end, that's the demographics of Scottsdale. The real estate is worth more. So typically in these, in these uh, communities where the real estate is worth more, you're seeing more of a seller's market. For example, the highest price real estate in all Phoenix is in Paradise Valley. Let's go check that out. It's even higher, 171.4. So technically, people who have money, people who have means, aren't as rate sensitive to what the Fed is doing. They're buying real estate and they're paying whatever price they feel like paying because it doesn't affect their bottom line as much. Makes sense, right? All right, let's go to, by contrast, let's go to one of the outskirt suburbs of Phoenix right now. Let's go to Buckeye. Uh, ooh, Buckeye. Wow, okay, so Buckeye, 51.3. That is down quite a bit, obviously, from where the uh, balance market is at 100 with the Cronford Report. Demand is actually pretty good, right? Why? Because price points are lower. Demand is, is just higher because you have investors playing in this price point as well. And by the way, guys, rental rates have done really well over the past two years, really well. In Phoenix, in fact, that 
investors are still going to buy and rent out and hold properties for you know who knows how long. But you have a 91.9 demand supply. Look at this. Everyone's trying to sell. Why is that? There could be a couple of reasons. Maybe because people who you know bought just in the last six months overextended themselves and now they want to sell right away and get out because they, they were speculating. We saw that a lot of that in 2005 and six down here in Phoenix, a lot, seven as well. It could be because you know people um, aren't, uh, they lost their job uh, because maybe they were somebody who got laid off, uh, that workforce out there, um, you know, and, and therefore they have to sell. Um, but here's the thing, guys, and I'm going to speak very, very clearly on this, okay? Um, and, and let me just speak to that real, real fast. Guys, if you have purchased your property sometime in the past two years, three years, especially two, two and a half years in Phoenix, and you you have equity. So if you are now in a financial bind where you got laid off of your work and you don't have the money or whatever to continue your mortgage payment, do not let it go back to the bank. Give us a call or your local realtor, your choice, and uh, let us help you because you have equity in your house. You could sell, unlock that equity, make some money, and move on. And... Here's the good news. If you lived in it over two years, the IRS, the federal government says that if you live in the house two of the last five years and you sell, then you have a, and you have a gain, you get off tax-free as a single individual up to $250,000 of gain profit or $500,000 as a married couple. So don't just, don't kick the can on the road and put your head, bury the, your head in the sand and just wait for better things to happen. Don't let it go back to the bank. Give us a call. We can sell it and unlock that equity for you to put in your pocket and do something else with that we'd be happy to advise you on as well, okay? So now let's go back over to Cromford. And you can see right here that if we go to, you know, let's just bump around there. Let's go to Chandler. We talk about Chandler a lot on this video because of the, you know, Silicon Valley of the desert. That's Chandler, Arizona. Let's go here. And you see a market index of 98.8. Very, very balanced, okay? Gilbert's right next to Chandler in the East Valley, 80.8. Makes sense because Gilbert's a little further out from the nucleus of the city. Um, so it gets a little cheaper. Let's go out to Queen Creek, which is even further right next to Gilbert, but further out. And it's even less, 53.7, guys. Supply is up. Demand is a little lower. So if you are maybe an investor and you want to jump in, you should be looking at a market like Queen Creek right now because there's deals to be had. There are some people who want to get out and there's deals to be had, right? So very important to uh, pay attention to that. Um, let's go to Sun City. For those of you who are maybe uh, more experienced in life and you're 55 plus and you want to live in Sun City where there's more golf carts than cars, let's check that out. Balanced market, okay? A lot of people there aren't, they don't have to sell. They may be the retirees for the most part, right? And uh, maybe second homeowners, but the retirees of some sort. And they don't have to sell. They have their retirement planned out and they're good to go. Market goes up, goes down in terms of the housing market. doesn't really affect them that much. They're going to stay in the house and live in it and sell when they want to. Okay, so pretty balanced. That makes a lot of sense. Tempe, where ASU is, located right in the center of the uh, city, uh, the Valley of, uh, of the Sun here, Phoenix, 87.8. So you get an idea of what's going on there. Now, guys, let's pop back over to the Crawford Market Index, okay? Let's look at this real quick because you're going to see some things that mimic a lot of what we just talked about with the Crawford Report. All right, let's go to the Crawford Index. Here you go. This is, this is instead of a gauge, this is now on a line graph, and you can see that overall, this is the entire Phoenix, Maricopa County area. Guys, did you know that Maricopa County, I believe, I believe Maricopa County is the largest by population county in the entire United States. Why? Because almost the entire greater Phoenix, Arizona area is located in one county, Maricopa County. So this takes all that into consideration right here. And you can see by looking at this index, we were, look at this, in March of 2022, just, what is that, six months ago or so, seven, we were at a 460 some market index that's 460 on a scale of 100 being balanced wow that's an insane market right so sellers had an extreme amount of leverage over all the buyers you can dictate terms now look at you're down to about 100 just just a little bit above we just saw it in the Crawford report right but overall in Maricopa county you're down to about a little over 100 so technically by definition it's still just a little bit still a seller's market but it doesn't feel like it, does it? No, because the trend line is going the opposite way. It's market is decelerating still at this point, not depreciating yet. If you take it from you know a uh, time frame of January first of twenty twenty two, or if you go year over year um, in in Phoenix, if you take year over year from September first to September first twenty one to twenty two in Phoenix right now, that actually is a decelerating market, not depreciating yet. It's actually still appreciating in terms of the number at ten percent, ten point one to be exact. But by the end, but as the market continues to decelerate, 
that could get lower and lower and lower by the time the end of the year comes here in December. So we'll see. Rates are obviously not helping. So Paradise Valley has the highest, right? 195 and rising. Buckeye is at 52 on the Crawford Index and falling. All right. So market summary for September. There were 1,635 new homes closed with a median price of 513. Guys, that is a healthy median price. Unit count is up 7.6% from August 21. There were only 5,784 resale closed homes or properties with a median price of 450. Guys, here's the thing. Everyone says, oh, the market's you know uh, falling and nobody's buying houses. Not true, guys. 5,784 homes were sold in, in September, which is still a boatload of homes to be sold, right? Um, in a good market, by comparison, in a good market, average month, you're looking at about 8,000 homes, right? Plus or minus, it could swing. You know, 1,500 homes or so in the crazy market months, we we're above 10,000 selling in one month, right? So 8,000 right there. So we're at 5,700. So we're down, that was that percent, about 30% or so overall in terms of unit count, transactions happening, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and guys, here's the thing. We want transactions to occur. Everyone who has a job um, you know, in this economy wants transactions to occur because there's so many jobs that are tied to the housing market. And here's a stat that's going to blow your mind, right? A stat right here is right now there's about 120, what, 120 trillion, excuse me, trillion, no, no, no. There's about 120 million households of people who own homes, not renters, own homes throughout America. That was 120 million. Um, about a third of those have been basically taken out of the marketplace. Why? Because corporations have bought about a third of those homes over the past several years. So now you're looking at about 88 million households, about 80 million households that are left, okay? Which means transaction counts are going to naturally be down. Now, with those corporations that bought those, they're going to rent those homes. So obviously, they, they will do a service for renters and the renter pool. But in terms of people who want to buy and sell, um, you know, and there's a lot of people right now that have interest rates that were, that they got in at 3%. Three and a half percent, two point whatever percent. So they're not very motivated to move right now, guys. Which is means there's only a segment out of those eighty million that are left to hopefully trade and buy and sell, buy and sell across the country. So hopefully that loosens up over time, and it will. It always does. Let's be let's not be dramatic here, um, but it may take some time. Okay, it may take some time. So let's go back over here to the market summary, and we'll wrap this up pretty soon. Um, but I think this is good information so that you guys have an idea of what's going on with the Phoenix housing market. Average sales price. So the median we saw right here was 513, you know, in the month of September. Average sales price at Maricopa County, you can see some line graphs here. And you can see that there's the color. So 2022, we're up here. So the average sales price, guys, is is you know about six hundred thousand or so, but it is it is doing still pretty well, right? I mean, look where it was in 2019, it was way down here. I mean, incredible amount of appreciation since 2019 up to 2022. Look at this, guys. So September 2019, I mean, if I take a stab at this here, you're going to be looking at about uh, 350 or so, right, at, for an average sales price. In just those three years, 350, 600 to 625. It's almost a $300,000 gain, right, of average sales price or equity of appreciation for every homeowner. And guys, here's what's going to hurt. We had so many people that were like, you know, um, I'm just going to wait. I don't know. This market's had a run up, a bull run since 2000, you know, call it 11, 10 when the market was bottomed out. And uh, I'm going to wait. And then COVID hit and boom, just went straight down 30%. Then we had that V-shaped recovery where it just came out and went crazy after that. And there are people then saying, I don't know. The market came out of the recovery of COVID here and it's V-shaped bounce and it's going, it's gone up, you know, 20% already in just like five months. And so I'm going to wait. It's over. It's overvalued. And then look what happened, right? It just kept going for the next two years for the most part. So if you own a home and you bought it for 2019, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. All right, active listings. You can see right here, this is what's causing a lot more supply. This is what's causing the, the, the market to cool off, which is exactly what the Federal Reserve wants to happen across the board in all the markets across America, right? So September here, you can see last year at this time, we had about, oh, I don't know, worth a thousand homes uh, available for sale on the market. Now we have about 19,000 properties available for sale on the market. So big, big jump. And you can see, um, obviously, in 2021, it was even as low as about 
six that well, really was at one point about six thousand, right? You can see down here. Here you go, six thousand earlier this year in 2020, uh, 2021, excuse me. All right, new listings. So you can see right here, those are all, all declining. Guys, check this out. Look at the seasonal market that Arizona has. So good market, bad market, average market, doesn't matter. For the most part, look at the seasonal average. Look at this. You get to November and the amount of listings and new inventory that comes in the market starts to go down, right? It just, that's just what it does. Um, so if you're looking to sell, Pro tip. Now, right now, there's still buyers out there buying. We just saw 5,700 5, homes traded in September. And that will continue, I'm telling you guys. But right now, with rates going up, if you're looking to sell and you're going to sell sometime in the next six months, I would I would strongly encourage you to consider selling sometime between now and end of this year. Strictly for the reason that if you do, you will have a lot less competition than all of your peers that will wait until January to put their home in the market because you can see in January, it's always pretty high as evidenced by right here, okay? It's a lot higher than it is in December and November, okay? No matter if it's a good year or bad year in the market. So food for thought, let us know. If you wanna talk through that process, we can break this down per your city and even zip code if you want to see the data. We can send that over to you, give us a call, right? Give uh, us a call, we'd be happy to do that. And by the way, if you're calling, you can call here at 480-442-9868. That's the office line. We'd be happy to take care of you and get you in touch with um, one of our amazing agents. Um, we'd love to chat with you or even myself, right? No problem at all. All right, sold listings. Here we go. Um, you can see this here. The count is down 2022 because transactions are down and listings are sitting around a lot longer. And if you see that there's an extra um, graph I'm going to get to about that in just a second here. Average days on market. Here we go. Look at the green line. On up it went, right? So very, very interesting. All right, we do have a, a comment from, uh, let me pull this out here. We have a comment here, um, but here's the problem. Unfortunately, I cannot, I cannot read Spanish. So, so I, I had no idea what that says. So Fadima, if I said that correctly, thank you for your comment. I don't know what you're saying. Maybe it's, maybe, maybe you're calling me names. I don't know, but uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide that because I don't know what it says, but thank you for, for joining in. All right, so that being said, um, I want to show you this, guys. This is kind of what we're talking about with the gauge of the Cronford Report. So we got some green here, right? This is this is the Cronford Market Index. That's some of these cities across Phoenix are going in the right direction with the green. That's good. And that's kind of to be expected with the seasonal trend that we kind of have in terms of demand and activity of buyers coming into town wanting to potentially buy homes. This is good, okay? The outskirts are still getting kind of hammered. Unfortunately, hopefully that, cha that trend changes too, but the higher price point areas, Tempe, Chandler, Scottsdale, PV are going in the right direction. All right, <clears throat> now let's go to here. Average sales price per square foot. Uh, wow, you can see right there from June, May, height of the market was May 13th this year. Look what it went to since May 13th. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's starting to stabilize though. I mean, look at the slide we had from May 13th-ish all the way down through um, you know, the end of July. That was a that was a, that was a roller coaster ride, right? That was a <laughs> yeesh, that was a six flag plummet. Um, all right, so I buy activity update in Maricopa County, guys. They're getting hammered, hammered. Okay, hammered. Oh, sorry, Matt. Thanks for letting me know. Let me show the screen, guys. Okay, I buy activity. Oh, let me go back here real quick and show you that roller coaster ride. Look at what happened from May thirteenth. Okay, approximately down to end of July. That is a big dip. That is a big, big, big dip. Okay, I buy activity update. This is open door, offer pad. Those are the two main ones left, right? Um, and you can see right here, look at this. For open door, 77% of the homes sold in Maricopa and Pinal County during August were sold for a loss. And only 23% made some gross margin. The average gross margin was negative 6.2% during August. And it has dropped even further during the first two weeks of September. Guys, they are getting hammered. They are losing money hand over fist right now. So. Here's the thing, pro tip. If you're looking to buy a house, and especially maybe an investment property, because maybe it's not as important to you with all the different you know bells and whistles that you might want for your own house, maybe you can specifically look at properties that Open Door is selling. We did that for a client right now, and they are getting a home that Open Door just purchased about a month and a half ago or two months ago for I think what I would say it was six eighty six, and we are under contract currently right now for five sixty three. Yeah. So, and they got to get rid of inventory. 
Uh, they can't hold it forever because that's not how their model works. They have investors they got to answer to, et cetera, et cetera. So guys, if you want to get a good deal, you maybe you pinpoint specifically listings on the market right now that are with Open Door, and we'd be happy to show you how to do that and help you with that too, by the way. Um, mortgage rates um, are going to continue to uh, obviously increase most likely. And unfortunately, it could get better or worse before it gets better, uh, potentially. And guys, here's a, here's a cool stat. Well, it's, it's not a cool stat, but it's a stat that's interesting. And that is approximately for every percentage point that rates go up or down, but in this case up, a buyer loses about 10% of buying power on their monthly mortgage payment. So if it goes down, buyers gain 10%, right? So in theory, if you're talking to a seller, or if you are a seller, in theory, for every time a rate goes up, mortgage rates, forget what the Fed does. It's not directly related, but it's indirectly related. Okay, but for every time a rate goes up, mortgage rates go up 1%, your buyer's purchasing power erodes by 10% on a monthly payment basis. So in, in a way, you could almost effectively say that you're losing almost 10%, right? Um, a value every time that happens because unless you're waiting for a cash buyer, which everyone pretty much kind of is at this point. But that's just a fun fact to uh, keep in mind, okay? For sellers, right? Only the faint of heart uh, need to apply right now, at least in September. But right now, um, I think it's going to turn, right? I think if you're in Des Moines, Iowa, if you're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that could continue to uh, be the case. I think given the seasonal nature of our of our market, you're going to start seeing a lot more activity, a lot more buyers looking in Phoenix, people who have means. Now, it won't be the equal across the board for every city in Phoenix, right? We already determined that some of the higher end areas are seeing a more uh, a better return, a, a more turn up of their, of their uh, values as opposed to the suburbs that are located in the outskirts of the valley, okay? So keep that in mind as well. Um, but you can see this right here. This is an interesting graph. In March of 2022, Sell the list price ratio 105%, okay? Across the board, Maricopa County. Right now, 97.6%. So listings now are basically selling for, call it 4% less than what they were based on the asking price in March. All right. Um, median days on market went from seven to 31, okay? That's a lot. So, you know, houses will still sell, guys. We had another client who actually wanted to jump in and buy a house. Um, this earlier, you know, today and yesterday, but this property was in a good area. It was under the five hundred thousand dollars price point, and um, believe it or not, and it actually was priced well. Guess what they got? Five offers. So, guys, there are still properties that are getting multiple offers if the home is priced well, correctly, and not still trying to get the March or April or May price of twenty twenty two. So that's the good news. It's encouraging with rates as they are. Homes will still get multiple offers if they are priced well, okay? And then if you go down here, um, that's a thank you for the monthly report, and we'd be happy to, um, happy to send this to you guys if you guys wanted this report as well. So um, I appreciate everyone joining the live cast today. We went 43 minutes, which was long, and, and it was a fun of uh, full of fun. Pat I can't talk here. Let me get some water. In just a second when this is done. But guys, I appreciate everyone here. This is packed. It was fun. Hopefully, it was uh, information that you can use to make informed decisions. That's what this is all about. We're trying to inform and uh, educate everyone, including our, our clients or just friends out there in the marketplace of what is really going on in Phoenix and why it might be smart to you know buy real estate. You know, the, I heard an old saying a long time ago. It goes like this. You don't wait to buy real estate. You buy real estate and wait. And for a market like Phoenix, I don't think that could be any more true um, for the majority of people that would apply. Now, obviously, if you're looking to, you have a contract job and you're in Phoenix and you maybe only be here for a year, that kind of thing, and you really you really don't want to be a landlord if, in fact, you have to move in a year and don't want to sell your house, I get that. Outside of that, because when you're renting, you're paying 100% interest, right? So 7% on a mortgage, not too bad, not too shabby compared to 100% interest on a, on a rental. But it doesn't apply for everybody across the board because someone may need to rent for a short period of time based on your current situation. Totally get that. But consider purchasing, and if you don't have to sell, if your exit strategy is not one that is dictated by by a certain amount of time, that is in the short term, I would highly recommend to sell and and ride the market up over the years. Now, over the years, will it look like this? It will. It's up and down, up and down. But it never goes up and down flat, guys. Like this, it goes up and down at an angle that trends upwards, just like the stock market over a thirty year period, a twenty year period, or whatever it may be. 
So guys, thank you very much for joining our live cast today. We'll be doing this every single week, uh, every Thursday at three o'clock or maybe four. We are one of those crazy uh, um, areas of town or the country that actually don't change with their uh, time zone. So it will be four o'clock mountain time when we change in November, I believe. But as of right now, we're gonna stay this for stay these uh, these YouTube lives at three o'clock Pacific time on Thursdays. And we'll be sure to send the alert out. So subscribe to our channel so you get those push notifications. And we really appreciate it, guys. Um, and oh, Super Iron Man, thank you, love it. Um, here we go. Appreciate it, Matt Taylor. Thank you, Abby. Thank you very much, guys. Until next time, we will see you later.